Hello and welcome to another uh, tutorial on the dev.java website. Uh, we, we are looking at the Java language basic and so far we looked at the item one, creating variables, naming them. Number two, we looked at the primitive types and number three, we looked at arrays. Okay. And then uh, let's look at the using a var type identifier. So what is the um, var keyword? We've already discussed this in, the, in some of the previous lectures and uh, starting with Java standard edition 10, they added this var and this is an identifier. Note that they're not saying that this is a keyword. They're saying that this is a type identifier. And we said that you can actually use var as the name of a variable that it still works fine and that's not the case for uh, keywords java language specification dictates that uh, keywords cannot be used as the name of variables however that does not apply to var because var doesn't uh, apply to all the scopes in your java program it only scopes to local variables so they decided to allow var to be used as a uh, as the name of the variables, that means var is not an actual keyword. It's not part of the Java language specification, right? So you can use a var type identifier to declare a local variable. In doing so, you let the compiler decide what is the real type of the compiler you create. And sometimes it's really the only way or the most, uh, the best way to handle this. Sometimes the types can get complicated. But the problem is that there is a downside to this and uh, sometimes the type that the compiler infers is not exactly the type that you intended it to be. So you have to be cautious about this. Once created, this type cannot be changed. Yes, um, that's the meaning of the static typing in uh, Java, right? So let me create a new package here. Let's call it the uh, uh, .var identifier. Uh, Let's create a class var identifier and let's have a main method here, right? So we said that var was uh, added uh, uh, from uh, Java 10 and I'm already, I'm currently on Java 16 here. And uh, as if you look at my JDK, I'm using JDK 16. Now in Eclipse, you can set the compilation level or the compiler if you have, for example, Java 16. JDK, you can actually downgrade the compiler level. So Eclipse allows you to, for example, even using JDK 16, it can uh, use it, it can, you can set the compilation level or the compliance level, for example, to JDK 8 or something, right? And that's, uh, that's because uh, Eclipse doesn't use the Java compiler that come with the uh, JDK that you are installing. It uses the runtime from the JDK, but it doesn't reuse the compiler. So Eclipse comes with, with its own internal compiler that has incremental compilation and also allows to set the comp uh, compliance level, right? So um, I can uh, say to use the comp compliance level from whatever JDK I set or whatever runtime I set. But then I can manually downgrade it, for example, to JDK 8 or uh, other JDKs, right? So that's because the Eclipse doesn't use the uh, JDK compiler. It uses its own Java compiler. So, uh, and obviously uh, that's, uh, uh, that's why uh, whenever a new JDK is released that has new features, we, you have to wait for your IDE, the newest version of your IDE to start supporting those features because IDEs, Java IDEs, don't use the actual JDK uh, compiler that comes with JDK. They have to use their own compiler. That's why it takes some time for them to integrate new features of the JDK into the, the, the IDE compiler. So var is for only only local variable type inference, right? And uh, in C++, if you're familiar with, we have auto. They added auto, which is similar to var, but auto is actually much more powerful than uh, the var that we use in Java. So is uh, much more powerful. And the reason auto is much more powerful is because uh, the, the JDK designers actually intentionally decided to limit the functionality of var. Because if you start using var uh, anywhere in your program, just like the, the, the way you can do it in uh, C++ with auto, it can result in some confusion or some surprises. So with, mo with more power comes more responsibility, right? So with great power comes a, a great responsibility, Res um, responsibility. 
And Java is, is all about simplicity, simplicity and reducing the confusion. So basically the C++ designers, uh, th their mindset was that C++ is already much, C++ is already much more complicated language. And if somebody is already writing code in C++, they know what they're doing, right? And they have no uh, fear of complication. That's why they allow you to add auto. You can write auto anywhere in your code. Return type of the functions, global variables, local variables, lambda expressions, anywhere you can. But var has been uh, handicapped a lot in Java, but they have started to adding more and more capability to var. But the main premise that var has to only apply to local variables is apparently that's something to stay. So I don't think they will ever remove this restriction what it means is that whenever you have you have a scope right we said that in java or c c plus plus a curly braces a pair of curly brackets define a scope so i can say var x is one and what this means to the compiler is that whatever the type is on the right side infer the most generic type and assign it to this variable so if i say uh, c south um, x dot class we know that uh, so why x cannot be resolved to a type? So the question is, why is this complaining? Um, that's because a dot class only applies to types, not variables, right? So let me just write it down. Dot class only applies to types. For example, the class name or primitive name. For example, I can say int dot class, but I cannot say uh, x dot class, right? So this doesn't work. So how do we, uh, how do I uh, basically, uh, so this is one, and if, you are, if I hover my mouse here, it says that int x, which means the compiler decided or inferred that the type is um, uh, int. If I put hover my mouse now, it says line, so the compiler um, decided that the, the, the right hand side is line, and that's what it inferred. So var x2, so let's go with x1, x2, x1 x1 plus 5 and then uh, uh, c south x2 let's look at this so obviously the compiler inferred that x1 is long right so let's hover the mouse here long what about x2 it's also long because long plus int int will be promoted to long what about if i say 5f and now it's float so um var is nice the nice thing about var here is that first of all all the equality signs are kind of aligned as as long as the name of the variables are the same so sometimes and the other thing the nice the nice feature about var is that uh, let me put this outside var is that when you're uh, when you create uh, classes uh, you already use the new operator plus the name of the class right so there's really uh, and when it, basically the name of the class is on the right hand side you already know the type so if i say a string um, or let's say um let's say a string okay a string s1 is new a string um for example uh, hello and sys out s1 all right so if i run this this works right but then uh, the idea here is that uh, whenever you look at this line of code right uh, s1 even if I didn't know what the type of the s1 is the right hand side is really telling right so you don't really need to repeat the type on both sides because it's really uh, uh, easy to understand the, what the type of s is by just looking at right hand side because whenever you use the new operator you have to um, kind of uh, see um, you have to type the name of the class uh, and that is very telling that's why they decided okay we just add var this doesn't mean that uh, java has become dynamically typed no it just means that the compiler already knows what you're doing right so you just look at the right hand side it's a string the compiler is very easy to for the compiler to infer what the type of this variable is this whenever you invoke new it knows exactly what type is the new operator is going to return so it just means that you you save yourself some time, some some uh, typing, and also it becomes nicer when you have these wars because um, uh, basically 
it's become nicer because then uh, you if you use the same length of uh, for your variables then these uh, equ assignments are really aligned with each other and nicer right so this is another uh, nice feature that we have so s2 here all right and uh, obviously we can say var s3 is s1 plus s2 and then sys out uh, s3 so we are throwing in var and uh, and it works so uh, we save ourselves some typing a string for example var and the compiler has no problem because java is a statically typed so if i'm adding two things it either throws an exception which means the plus is not defined if the plus is defined for example then uh, Java already, J, J, uh, compiler already knows the, what the return type is going to be. So if we add two uh, strings together, the return type has to be in a string. Now you can use var with also var with uh, uh, func or method calls, right? So uh, I can say public, uh, static, uh, void, uh, or a string. Um, get a string. And then uh, this doesn't take any variable return for example uh, new a string uh, hello world all right and then we can say var s4 is uh, uh, get a string this also works again this uh, saves you some typing to figure out what the type is especially if you're using someone else's api uh, and you don't really want to bother yourself with uh, knowing what the type is now obviously after you get this variable you want to start using the dot operator on the variable so you kind of need to know what the type is but sometimes if the type is part of the higher type hierarchy or class hierarchy and i mean sometimes you really don't care and you just want to you already know the top level api like you know that it's going to return for example some sort of list you don't care if it's an array list or whatever so you just use var here and then uh, just go ahead and continue using the api that you already can guess so it could be very useful in some senses now the other important thing or that uh, made this var interesting was with iterators right so um and uh, let's start with the for each loop now let's say um, int array uh, uh, array one a one is one two three minus one minus two minus three so we already discussed arrays we said that you can directly declare them and use an initializer list to initialize them and then uh, for each loops means is that we want to iterate through each and each uh, all the elements and at each round we want to get the value of each element and maybe we can we want to do something with it so for we have to say int a for example in this column operator which means in inside a1 go do something for example sys out a this is called the for each loop which means for each element inside uh, this uh, array do something right now the thing here is that uh, um, obviously if the type of the elements is very complicated or you don't really need you you really don't want to type the type is very long and java is known to have very long names right let's say this array is an array of uh, objects and the name of the objects the class is very um very long and you don't really want to bother typing it obviously ids can can help a lot but var is also a very nice thing so again we know that whenever you have a for each loop the scope of this variable is uh, this one right so a is a local variable and uh, any local variable type inference can be assigned to var which means var works for any local variable inference it's not just in the scope of main method or a scope of method no even in the scope of the for loop for example var can be used that's why uh, they try to make this uh, idea of a local variable type inference as globally used as possible so it not only applies to a scope of the method it can also as, uh, apply to any uh, scope for example here i created a scope an inner scope and var works fine same for the for loop while loops uh, try with try construct switch anything that can use a um, uh, that can has a scope 
locally uh, a local variable it, it can be used with var now one thing to mention that we previously we said that um uh, let's say get a string to we said that the parameters uh int a for example the parameters of a uh, method are also local variables to the scope of the method but they decided not to allow using var here and uh, if you look at the error uh, method here for the type of the parameter, it says that var is not allowed here. That's because it breaks the type, type safety promise that the Java has and Java puts a lot of emphasis in that. Because even though this is a local scope, um, you can't really tell this defers the type to runtime and that's why uh, so uh, var the promise of why is uh, still means that uh, uh, the compiler must be able to deduce the type at compile time however when you have var on the type of the parameter there is no way for the compiler to know what the actual type is right and that breaks the a strong type safety promise that the java provides now in c++ you can actually write auto here and the compiler say okay whatever whenever i see um whenever i see that uh, you are calling this function or method with the, a, a specific type of parameter i assume that that's going to work if it doesn't then i throw a compilation error right so here int what i mean by that uh, let's say you in c you type auto here so you let the compiler deduce the type and then you go and use that type uh, in the body um, so um, if the compiler and then let's say you have this method and pass an integer or pass a string or something and obviously the compiler deduces that okay you pass an integer and tries to use an integer type in the body of your function if it works fine everything logically works fine the compiler says okay that's fine and then uh, if it doesn't the compiler in c just throws a compilation error but in java they decided not to do that not to defer it to runtime instead uh, they decided to really put this emphasis that var means that the compiler has to be able to deduce the type if it doesn't then it just doesn't allow to compile right it doesn't mean uh, that's why they really couldn't allow var in the parameters of a uh, method because then uh, i mean you have to go and use this and the compiler has to figure out if the the use case of this parameter in the body of the method is a legal java statement or not and that causes confusions so they decided not to allow that however they decided to um, allow uh, for example uh, um, so before do so uh, before doing this let's go back to our uh, uh, this uh, for each loop now we know that the for each loop eventually translates into an iterator and uh, behind the scenes um, uh, so uh, if you look at the uh, basically uh, constructs like a uh, uh, list or etc um, so I can say uh, 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 arrays as list and then pass a1 right and then uh, um, by the way, one of the nice thing, nice nice features that Eclipse has, you can type var, and this already extracts a uh, variable, right? A1 as list, for example. So I used before introducing the var keyword in Java, I used to do basically this kind of thing. So instead of, for example, bothering with typing the name, I would use, for example. Uh, create my object and then say var use the eclipse template and it automatically deduces the type and then s4 for example right or s5 that's how i used to handle uh, not writing the type on the left hand side because the new is already telling but now that in they introduced the var i just say var so this is a very nice feature ids already had this kind of uh, uh, type inference before with uh, eclipse for example has these uh, 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 create a basically um, um, a template for creating a var if you don't want to bother with uh, figuring out what the type is and that also works even with the return type so I could say here get a string but let's say I don't want to guess what the return type is and I want to assign the return type of this to a variable I just say var 
and Eclipse automatically deduced for me that the type return type is going to be a string, right? As file. So I used to do, I used to use this kind of var template in Eclipse. Now other IDs might not have this, so they decided to provide this nice feature var generally for all the IDs. Uh, basically, they cook this or build this into the uh, JDK itself, into Java itself, which is a nice feature. Uh, you don't need to really guess what's going on. So let's say um, I go back here and say arrays as list, right? And then uh, pass the A1 and then uh, I want Eclipse to um, uh, deduce the type. So it's list of integer. List of array of integer. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what I wanted. So um, if I do a sysout on uh, uh, A1 as list, So it just says an int uh, array, right? At least it has one element. Uh, but then the question is, um, what if I use var here? What type is deduced? Is it still deduced list of integer, right? So um, basically, uh, let's see if we can uh, uh, as list you give it a list element. So let's say I create a list with all these elements. All right. Now the nice, nice thing here is that when you use var, if you do some changes to your right hand side so that the return type changes, you really need to worry about the right, the, the right, the left hand side. The compiler automatically deduces that. Now the compiler deduces that I'm actually the return type is actually a list of integer, right? So it's an, another nice feature. As long as uh, your, the rest of your API doesn't change, if you change the return type of your right-hand side, var is a nice feature to have because you really don't need to change anything. If had I have this uh, list of int array, now we see this doesn't work, so I have to kind of figure out what's wrong and then go and change this to list of integer, right? But then when I have var, the compiler automatically does the job for me. So that's a nice thing to have. Yes. And now with iterators, so the, the original way uh, or the original way to iterate uh, through list is with uh, iterators, right? So I wanna, let's put here using var with iterators. So what we're going to say that A1 as list, right? Iterator, so we have a, um, Iterator, list iterator, list uh, iterator, which gets an index, and splitterator, if you wanna do multi-thread processing. So we wanna go and get an iterator with integer, right? And then we're going to assign it to a variable, uh, it, that's the typical name. But then the question is, what is the type? So you kinda have to guess the type, and sometimes the type can get very, can get very long. That's why in the past, I always use the a var template and it tells me it's a list a iterator of integer right it but now it's very easy to just use var that works fine and then we're going to say while it uh, has next we're going to do a sysout uh, it dot next so working with iterators is also very easy right let's go with print and uh, maybe add a space here so one, two, three, minus one, one, two, minus two, minus three. And um, <clears throat> we can also, again, this uh, iterator, we declared it outside uh, the while, but we know that the while also has a scope. So what we can do instead of doing this line, we can say uh, uh, while var it equals uh, a1 as list iterator. Um, so this is assignment. Um, so let's see, uh, I guess uh, we cannot have multiple expressions in the while, so, but uh, what if uh, we know that uh, this returns and then we say that has uh, next, okay, this doesn't work, so. I guess we cannot do war outside, but again, uh, it has next. 
So basically now it's easy to um, to kind of uh, not worry about the type of the left hand side if the only thing that we care about is the top level API. I know that this returns an iterator and I already know the general contract of an iterator has next and next. So why should I bother figuring out what the type is going to be? Is it going to be an iterator of integer, iterator of line? I don't care. I just want to loop through the elements and print them. And the print works with any type. So why, why should I care what type is? And again, before this, I used to do the var template from uh, um, Eclipse iterator. And if I want to extract this, I say dot var. This is not part of the JDK. This is part of the features that Eclipse provides, var template. And it already uh, deduces the type and then I can say it. I used to do this, but nowadays I just use var because there is no point of uh, writing the type, right? Now, the final thing that I want to end this lecture with is war with uh, uh, Lambda expressions. So um, let's say I want to create a uh, uh, basically comparator. So um, let's, let me create a class called uh, a math function, right? And uh, it's actually an interface. And I'm going to say that this is a functional interface add function which means it only it, it is allowed to only have one public abstract method and I'm going to say that it has a abstract method double value and double x it takes an x value and returns a, a double value right this is my contract of a real valued function this is basically when you say for in mathematical term f of x right y is equal to f of x when you say value or create a math function and uh, uh, call the value, you pass it a value and returns a value. Now, this is the general contract of the interface, but then we know that uh, the nice thing about functional interfaces uh, is that you can create anonymous functions or uh, basically lambda expressions. These are anonymous functions. Anonymous functions because they don't have name. You just say uh, math function func1 is x goes to math dot sign of x for example right this is how we beautifully use lambda expressions when we do scientific computing with java but then uh, we can <coughs> can we use var here the answer is is now is uh, is uh, is no because right hand side doesn't have any uh, uh, basically uh, indication to the Java compiler how this function is going to bind to what class or what type that's why when you use lambda expression on the right hand side you should use var here you cannot use var you have to use uh, the actual type that you want to uh, bind it to lambda expressions bind to functional inter interfaces bind to functional interfaces same with method references so uh, mass function func2 it also binds to um, it also binds to a functional interface so method uh, references also bind to uh, functional interfaces but obviously in neither of these cases you cannot use var because from the right hand side the compiler has no idea what you're trying to do right which uh, type you're going to bind this right hand side to it but what about anonymous classes? So um, I can uh, can I say uh, so? Let's create an anonymous class. Func three is new math function, and we have to also pro obviously provide a uh, override to value. So math dot sign of x, right? But then the question is, can I use var? And the answer is absolutely yes, because whenever you create a new upper called the new explicitly, the compiler knows exactly what type you're trying to create. That's the whole meaning of new. That's why you now you are allowed to use uh, uh, func3. And all of these work fine. So func1 dot value at 1.1 and then uh, func2 and func3. They all work fine. And if you're not familiar with the details of the Lambda expressions, the compiler handles uh, the lambda expressions or anonymous functions and the anonymous classes separate differently. So this this line of code, func3, this will create a separate class file. However, lambda expressions don't create a class file at compile time. So let me run this. Uh, uh, okay, so 
let's do a print line here to separate the previous one and as you can see all of these work so we have three different ways of creating or binding a uh, function to a math function interface which is lambda expressions method reference or an anonymous class now for the last thing let's look at the uh, bean for variables now let's see what happened here I'm gonna zoom in a little bit uh, okay not variables uh, var identifiers so I have math function class that's the interface I created in this package var identifier is this class but var identifier underscore uh, dollar one dollar one means this class was the result of the compilation of an anonymous inner class and can you guess what inner class was this one anonymous inner class? it's this one so the way a compiler handles the lambda expressions and method references is different from how it handle, handles uh, anonymous uh, inner classes. And in general, um, because the thing here is that when you have anonymous inner class, the syntax might look a little bit uglier. Obviously, lambda expressions or method references are more beautiful, but they have dynamic dispatch because which means at runtime, um, uh, the, the JVM looks at what to do with these calls. However, here, this function has already been aesthetically compiled so the compiler uh, basically the runtime doesn't need to figure out what to do it knows exactly it just loads this class file so i open the declaration so as you can see uh, this is the that func3 let me open up the uh, class file viewer we just look at the bytecode so it has a value it says uh, dload one math sign so in order to prove to you that this is actually the result of this func3 i'm going to change this to cosine for example save it eclipse automatically compiles and updates the class file so the first two are sign calls the second the third one is cosine so let's look at the bytecode again and let's look at the value and as you can see, it has a call to cosine, which means this was the result of the compilation of the third, which was an anonymous in a class. Now, the upside here is that because this was statically compiled, this find three, calling find three is uh, a little bit faster because as the first time you call it, the uh, JVM loads this uh, anonymous class, dollar one. But after that, it knows exactly what to do. It doesn't have to uh, spend any time figuring out what to do. But for the anonymous function, it, they have dynamic dispatch. So if I look at the, um, if I look at the um, var identifier, look at the class file. In the main method, uh, we are going to look at uh, so invoke special, uh, invoke virtual, static. Let's go down to where do we get the. Uh, so invoke dynamic so these are dynamic dispatches so um, we are printing and then invoke dynamic uh, value equals the var identifier math function so at runtime um, the JVM has to execute this extra line of code whereas uh, for the, the uh, uh, and if you put this in a loop obviously you have to execute this multiple times but you see for the third one it just says create a new object of this type var identifier dollar one which was a class file right and then uh, invoke the uh, call the constructor and then after that uh, uh, you're you're all set right so you create that object once that object is created when you say um, uh, value you call the value uh, method for this find three it's it knows exactly what to do this object has been created but for this one we have the invoke dynamic call so i hope you enjoyed this lecture please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one